Bethany, uh, who wrote this little rice diet book, How to Rice Diet book, reached out to me a couple weeks ago and asked me to review the book. I said, sure, I will review the book. Here is the review of said book. Now, I did take notes, so there's going to be a little bit of jump cuts while I look at my notes and stuff like that. Hopefully, you can live with that. If you can't, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. All right. <clears throat> so, trusty notepad. I, I do like that she gives a history of uh, the rice diets and that she gives some checklist of the, the rice diet. So it's something that you can go by. I know on page six and seven. So here's an example of the checklist. And then I think I wrote 40 and 41 that she uh, did the checklist as well. I do like the checklists. I, I assume if you get this in a digital format, I think she has a digital format that you can kind of reset it, which is ideal. I like that she gives um, a couple of different options here in place of rice. Now, I, I would think that the best option is just to do rice. I did, like if you watched the last video I made about my 30 days into the rice diet slash, you know, with potatoes, I actually like the option of having potatoes. I know Walter Kempner, Dr. Walter Kempner used rice because of the minimal amount of protein uh, that was in the, the rice comparatively to potatoes, comparatively to the Khan study, who, <clears throat> who proved that uh, with a potato and fat basically only diet, you could have all the nitrogen or protein, whatever you want to call it, that you uh, could possibly need. So there is the two different uh, aspects of this. So if you are trying to get as low protein as possible, then rice is definitely you know, what you want to use. Uh, as far as the allowable beverages, so she talks about the allowable beverages. On here is coffee. I, I don't agree with that at all. I don't even think coffee is human food. Much like I don't really think kale is human food. It's got so many inhibitors in it. There's so many tannins in it. What what are you doing? It's a, a vasoconstrictor. Like, wh why are you drinking it? I, I just, I can't, I can't get on board with that. So that, I, I just need to make that known. It's kind of like sweet potatoes. I don't think they're human food. Um, even though I have sweet potatoes. She also tells you on page 17, I don't want to forget anything here. On page 17, how to uh, cook the rice uh, from 17 to 24. She kind of breaks down how to cook the rice um, and different options that you can have, <clears throat> like a berry compote, a strawberry, applesauce, fruit cereal, oat milk, banana milk. 100% fruit, ice cream, and stuff like that. So it is nice to have, unlike me, like I, I never hardly ever give recipes of anything that I do, largely because it's so boring. I'll literally just make potatoes and eat them. Or like last night, I literally just made rice. I threw it in nori and I dipped it in tonkatsu sauce. So... I, you know, what are you going to do with that? I know people ask me, they're like, oh, I want to see it anyway. I'm like, I don't know. Page 25, portions and planning. How much to eat in a day. This is, this is where we kind of like, I, do what you want to do. Do what you, if you want to, if you want to portion control, fine. But uh, Dr. Walker, uh, Dr. Walter Kempner's diet for weight loss does not include tablespoons of sugar, which I disagree according to this book. Uh, he did. Uh, most of the advice in this book is geared towards weight loss as an impact of the majority. Uh, I've included the lowest portion for uh, quick as results on page 37. Uh, the way my husband and I lost 25 pounds in the first 25 days. Now, I don't really think that that is a good idea. Okay, this is this is turning into an Amazon Prime can get it today. Like, I, I can literally go on Amazon and buy almost anything that they have, and I can have it today, right? I I don't like this idea of immediate anything. I think it damages the metabolism, and it sets you up. And here's one of the things that Walter Kempner and even McDougal, for, for, uh, for some, you know, for some things, couldn't figure out why his patients had to stay at such a low level of... Uh, caloric intake and how, why they kept having to add walking in. But if you add that to the Minnesota starvation uh, with Ansel Keys, he kind of tells you why that is happening. And another thing is when you when you go really low, when you when you kind of starve yourself. And I know some people who do this. You are going to screw up your metabolic rate, and you're going to screw everything else up, and you're going to have to stay at like you're going to have to keep 
lowering how much you eat or you're going to have to keep increasing how much exercise you do. And that is going to destroy your leptin and ghrelin. And so you're not going to ever get to a point where you're actually eating what the body is asking you to eat. You know, when you get into this and, and say you're way overweight, way overweight, your leptin and ghrelin do not work. They don't work. They are completely malfunctioning if, if they're even working at all. So you are going to have to go through that period of time where you're, you're eating a lot more than you probably should be. It's because you're not getting the uh, signals that you're supposed to be getting to stop eating or to eat or stop eating or uh, to, to eat. Now, if you need to portion control to keep yourself from binge eating, maybe that's that maybe that has some valid points in it. But if you're just eating like potatoes and rice and fruit, like, I, I don't know, especially potatoes. But then, you know, with the potatoes, I, I ran into an issue where I just could not eat enough. And I almost blacked out on one of my hikes. I, I wanted to mention again, so the Kempner claimed that he was adding in the sugar to half half you know the amount of protein that people were actually eating it it didn't have uh, like but he did also add it uh for extra calories for the people who were underweight and this also leads me back to one of the things that mcdougall has talked about about this study that they did on women who they told them to eat a normal their normal diet and they added 1500 calories worth of sugar to them now i don't know if that was in the form of just table sugar or if it was candies Depending on which study you look at, it was sugar or candies. But what they did was they found that if they added 1,500 calories worth of just straight sugar to these women's diets every single day, it took over three months for them to gain up to a third of a pound. And that was the, the, the highest that any one of them got. So as far as adding sugar in, I actually think it makes you more insulin sensitive than anything. And I kind of experienced that myself back in 2020 when I added, or 2022, when I added a pound of sugar a day to my diet and I, I, I got my blood work beforehand and I got my blood work afterwards and I uh, my thyroid healed itself and my testosterone doubled. So I don't agree with this not adding in sugar. I forgot to mention, I probably should have mentioned in the beginning, she's got this broken down into a couple different steps. So the first step you would just have the uh, grain and the fruit. The second step you would have the grain, fruit, and a little bit of vegetable. And I do know that Kempner um, did that himself uh, because of the sodium content. He would cut out most, if not all, vegetables for everybody that was involved with the rice diet. Page thirty-three, and this is not. This is a good book. I would, I would, you know, I would recommend. It. It's you know, it's got a lot of valid points. But as far as page thirty-three into uh, thirty-four. Um, his portion restrictions, Dr. Walter Kepner's, were sometimes a, a thousand calories or less. And that is asking, asking for trouble. You are asking for trouble. You are asking for your me meta metabolism to just be screwed. You are screwing your metabolism. I don't agree with this at all. And he himself could not figure out why he had a lot of people that needed to stay on these crazy low calories and keep increasing their walking. It's ridiculous. He he was very good at most things, but I don't know why he, like there was a disconnect with this whole, you know, leptin ghrelin. You will eventually, and I know I've mentioned this a couple times, you will eventually level out. Like, but you can, you can go the opposite. Like when I first started a couple, you know, like a month ago, I, I was going to do potatoes only for like a, a month, but I couldn't handle it. And the first day that I ate, all I could eat was a, a small amount of potatoes. And then it kept increasing, but I kept losing weight. And I didn't even know that. I, I stepped on the scale the second week in and the fourth weekend, but I was losing weight. And my, um, it kept increasing and, and I couldn't, I could not match it with the amount of potatoes I was eating. So I had to add in rice because rice is a little bit easier to get in and it, you know, so, so you can get the calories. I almost blacked out on a hike. So I do not agree with a thousand calories. Come on. I, like I know freely talked about, she, you know, like a lot of her breakfast and, you know, see people see how skinny she is. I like 1200 calories just for breakfast. So I do not agree with this at all. All right, so page 38 is where we get into uh, step two, which is where you can add in vegetables. Now this one, here's a, here's a, you know, the checklist again, which you can add in. Um, just get the book so you can <laughs> you see it. I'll link, link it down in the description section. As far as vegetables go, I would 
Test this out yourself. I doubt you're going to find a doctor these days who's actually going to help you with this. I doubt it. I would test this out yourself. I would drop them all out for a certain amount of time and then add certain ones back in. Like a lot of people have cruciferous issues. If you do, maybe it's not for you, right? You know, you don't have to force yourself to eat this stuff. Like if you were out in the wild and you came across bananas and broccoli, there's no way in hell you're, you're going to eat the broccoli over the bananas. I'm sorry, it's just never going to happen. Maybe you combine them somehow. I don't know. That's asking for a lot of gas, but like, I don't know. You know, like there's no way. Just think about what you would do in nature. Like, would you really want to eat 20 pounds worth of greens just to get it? like 20 or 2000 calories. I highly doubt it. I know I wouldn't. So the bottom line is I would test this out. You know, like she's got a lot of, a lot of vegetables, you know, cucumber, bok choy, celery, lettuce, zucchini, bell pepper, and I've, you know, and then she starts adding in potatoes. I don't know why we consider potatoes vegetables. The Japanese do that as well. I, I don't know. It seems more starch to me. There's a lot of starch in there. And she adds in uh, sulfur seasonings. I, Here's, here's another thing about the salt. So there's a lot of uh, people having diseases from salt, but they're eating table salt. And table salt is literally sodium chloride, which is not good for you. So if you get, like, I don't really agree with Himalayan, but I do agree with the Celtic salt. Like if you get a Celtic salt that has like 53 to 55 somewhere minerals in that, that is not salt. <laughs> like like you have on the table. Like it's completely different. And it's got a couple different kinds of magnesiums in it it's it's not it's not table salt it's not bleached table salt so if you're if you're thinking of everything in the form of bleached table salt then of course yeah i would limit that but if you're getting salt that actually has the minerals in it that you're supposed to be getting or if you're having like nori or something like that you know it's just not comparable all right and once again from 45 i think it is to 59 she does talk about cooking methods different kinds of i didn't know she had a dirty rice in here i've always wanted to make dirty rice <laughs> I'm glad I saw that. I'm glad I got the book. <laughs> 45 through 59 is, is like recipes and stuff like that. Uh, we get into the portions and stuff again on page 60. I am more in ad libitum because you will eventually tail out. You will eventually get to a point where you're either eating way more than you thought you could or you're starting to tail off. Now, I've had both happen and... During this last month, I was shocked at how much more I was eating than previous. Like everybody comes on here and, and blames me for eating like un, like crazy amounts of calories, which just isn't the case. Most of the time, I'm I'm like I, I would rather just not even eat. Like if 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 you didn't have to eat or sleep. I would choose that option. Like if there's two options in the world, you'd have to eat and sleep, or if you had to not sleep and 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 not eat, I would choose option two. Okay, I, I just would. So a lot of the times, it, it's one of those that like I actually have to get myself to eat, otherwise I'll eat like three calories a day. She talks about uh, binge eating in here. If you're somebody who emotionally binge eats, that is the one thing that you gotta w watch out for. And if you are portion controlling, this is going to get worse. So don't portion control. If you are, you would rather, I would rather somebody stay a little heavy for a little longer and get their leptin and ghrelin working than to lose 25 pounds in 25 days, which I'm not making fun of. If that's your thing, great. Because that person who emotionally eats is eventually going to start binging again. This has been proven time and time and time and time and time again. Look at The Biggest Loser. Look at Weight Watchers. They got sued. They lost. Look at all of these number systems where they tell you you can only eat a certain amount of number of foods. It happens every single time. Neil Barnard talked about it in his book, even a 500 calorie drop is very drastic and can really screw your, your system up. And that gene book that he wrote, I got rid of my bookcase and it's in the box over here. Otherwise, I'd have brought that over. I completely forgot. It's not a good idea. Now, what does happen is if you are allowed to eat ad libitum, even if it's off this book, even if it's just rice and fruit, if you are allowed to eat as much as you want to and you are not adding in the fat, which I found out this last month, even a little bit can screw you up. If you're because I like I didn't add any and I lost ten, like 10 pounds in a month. If you are not having the fat anymore, if you're not having the high protein anymore and you're replacing it with just starches and fruit. You are naturally going to actually eat less calories. 
Now, that's not the aim of this. But you are naturally going to eat this the volume wise. If you go by volume wise, you are naturally going to eat less calories. And this is what Barnard talked about in his book. And this is, I think, one of the things that Kempner really was missing from this whole thing. Now, if you need to get somebody and you're a doctor and you're monitoring these people, if you need to get somebody from 400 and some odd pounds down to like under 200 as quick as possible because they're dying because of X. That's a different thing. If you are 400 some pounds, which I have been, and you just need to get it down because it just isn't great to have 400 pounds on you, that's a different story. So if you're being watched by a doctor and you've got however many pounds to lose and it needs to be done now because you've got X going on, that's a completely different story. And I'm not even going to touch that subject. I have I have um, go, uh, skipped some of the stuff. You know, she does talk about phase one, two, and three. She talks about a, a bunch of other stuff. I, I would urge you to get the book. It's like ten ninety nine. I didn't really think it was that bad. So I, I've I've skipped over some of that stuff. I, I didn't really think. You know, I I, I don't want to micromanage this. So at page seventy three, she starts talking about exercise. Now I hundred percent agree with this. Now tracking, I don't agree with tracking at all. I used to. If you watch my videos from even two years ago, I talked about tracking this, tracking that. I don't have anything that tracks anything anymore. I don't want to know. I, I will track it time-wise just so I kind of have some idea. I don't want to, I don't care how many calories. I don't care about any of that because, you know, if you really look at the efficiency of, of exercise as far as burning calories, it's not that great. What it is great as is changing your insulin around your insulin it's if in the first in the beginning it's probably going to raise your cortisol but at some point that will reverse and your cortisol will, will, will start going down after exercise there is a protein that is released uh, i don't know what the name of it is while you do exercise they literally call it the happy protein because you start having like these happy thoughts if you if you can you can actually watch People who have like different brain monitors hooked up to their head and while they go on a walk, a walk, th their brain waves actually change. So there is a lot of effect with exercise in that manner. And I don't really care about the calories burned. So tracking it, just getting yourself to go do it. And, and, I, and here's another thing. If you are sore, if you are barely making it through the day, like cut back, you're doing too much. If it's, if you get done with the exercise and you can keep going, that's really where you want to be. So you got it. You got to figure out what that looks like. You got to figure out what I could keep doing this, but I really shouldn't looks like. And the other end of it is I can't even I, like I need a wheelchair to get out of the gym, like somewhere. <laughs> yeah, figure that one out. But yeah, I 100% agree with the exercise. As far as like he he was having his people walk like eight to like 20 miles a day. Is that necessary? No. Did they have anything else to do? No. So that, I mean, you really got to think about that. Like they literally were just sitting at the right rice house, eating rice all day. All they had to do was walk. Like, you know, there was no cell phones. There was, there was books and walking. Like that was your option. She talks about food triggers, fasting and elimination. I don't agree with fasting at all. Not even going to get into that one. Uh, as far as the uh, gluten, she talks about gluten allergens. Here's the thing. Glyphosates are, are causing most of this. I don't really think gly the glue. Uh, have you ever seen somebody who actually has celiac disease when they eat gluten? They're like on the corner in a fetal position. Like if that's not you, <laughs> you don't have a gluten issue. You probably have a glyphosate issue. Like find like a different form of wheat to, to eat or just get it from Europe because they don't allow a lot of this to go on. Now, but that being said, there's really no gluten in the rice diet anyway, so it does eliminate a lot of these. Nightshades. Now, I know a, a fair amount of people have issue with nightshades, and it's mostly with potatoes, and I think that's because of the solanine. So if your potatoes have a green hue or green on the potato, just throw it out, get another one. If you do that and you still have issue, take the skin off because there's a lot of solanine in the skin. If you still have an issue, then don't eat it. I mean, as simple as that. Now, sweet potatoes are not nightshades. They're, what do they call Morning glories, I think. That's a completely different thing. So if you really want potatoes and you actually uh, can stomach uh, sweet potatoes more than I can, then that is something that you might want to look into. Uh, she talks about fasting. I'm not going to get into that one. 
<clears throat> she has a food pyramid uh, going on here. There, there's, you know, it's portions and stuff like that for, for maintenance after you're done. It, it is a very comprehensive book. It really is. Uh, it does give some examples of, of weight loss here. And then here's some of Kemp Nurse people. Um, these pictures are also in uh, the Rice Diet book. You know, they lost quite a bit of weight. Now, again, these people had to maintain, for the most part, at least from what I read in here, they had to maintain a low calorie and walk a lot every day. And I just don't think that's necessary at all. She does have some prayers in the back, which I appreciate. Again, you know, if I I would I would definitely have to say this is a good book to read, a good book to have around. If you want the recipes in here too, that you know that's very helpful. It's helpful for somebody who's just getting started off with the whole thing. It's it's better at a lot of stuff than I am because I am just not into making recipes and showing that kind of stuff. So if you want something that has recipes and kind of holds your hand. This is definitely a perfect uh, little book to do that. It's not very big. I think it's 100 page, 120 pages or so. That's my review. I largely like it. I don't really agree with the lack of sugar thing at all. I, I mean, at all. I can't put my stamp of approval on that one at all. I'm sorry. It just, I, I don't, after seeing what I've seen in my own self, like, I just, I can't, I can't agree with it. Anyways, that is it. That is it. That is my review. I'll link it down in the description section. Go check it out. I think there's a digital version of it. I don't like digital books. They give me headaches. She, oh, you know what? The last thing I did want to mention, she does have an accountability. So the rice diet support.com. Uh, if I remember, I'll put that down in the description section as well. Just, just so you can have somebody, uh, you know, holding your hand or an accountability or whatever. That is definitely a good thing. Especially, I mean, cause like Walter Kepner said, this diet's more interesting to talk about than actually do. And that is definitely true. Uh, especially if you're just eating rice and not doing any of the fruit, which I don't really recommend. I think that's a recipe for Now, if you're going to do just rice only, you're going to have to take a vitamin tab of some kind. But if you're doing uh, the rice and the fruit, then you're not going to have to do that. And I would, I would, I, I don't even, I can't even think of a, a reason to even do that. Now, if you're doing rice and potatoes, you'll be fine as well, because potatoes literally have everything in it. And that is my review. Um, any comments or questions, leave them down below. Maybe I can do an interview with her and she can answer any of the uh, questions or comments down below. Anyways, talk to you in the next one.